Hi, I'm Eric Baer, the Customer Technology Specialist out of Phillipsburg, Kansas, and you're going to be going over the uh, display setup for your 2630 and Gen 4 displays. In this video, we're going to be going over display setup for your Gen 4 display. I'm going to go through some of the basics of, of how the screens are laid out and a few different ways to get to the same place. Um, but Gen 4s in general, they're, they're a lot more intuitive and easier to find the information you need. The difference between the Gen 4 and 2630s is we can click straight on these modules and it takes us to further information. Unlike your 2630, you always had to go to main menu, uh, lower right, and then go to your combine. There was a lot of button pushes to get to where you needed. But with the Gen 4, we can click straight on any of these modules and it takes us straight to the information we need. So these are the home pages that, that come preloaded. Um, just know that these are customizable if you do want to do that, but Gear gives you a pretty good set of, of home pages to begin with. So we're just going to go through with some of through the preset pages and, and what's on each one. And, and then if you want, you can customize those after the fact. But so these are your home buttons in the upper right hand corner. It just switches between each of the run pages. If you do have an extended monitor, there's another button that will show up right here and you can push that and it will kick what we see here on this screen out to your extended monitor. So if you want to switch between guidance and combine functions and what we see on this screen versus our extended monitor, like I said, there's that another button that will show up here. But just for example, this is just a, a 4600. So push those buttons and it flips through your home pages. Combine specifics and there's this page is, is the one that I like to actually run with because it does have a, a picture of our, our mapping as well as our other combine functions. So we're going to jump straight in as though we were setting up ready to go to the field. First place we're going to go is our setup in the bottom left. So if you remember in your 2630s there was your G, H, and I which was your setup for your documentation. This work set up in the bottom left, if you can think of that as your GH and I, like in your 2630. So your location, so we click on this, this is where we choose where we're at, our client farm in our field. If you have previous data, of course it will show up in your list, but if you do need to add one, we can hit view all and then you can go into your either client farm or your field and hit add, add a new new field. It's pretty easy to do. Um, if you do have to add them, if, if it's a brand new machine, it's it's pretty easy to do. So we're going to leave that as field two. So that was our resources. If we go down to our equipment and then our combine. With the newer equipment, all of all of these offsets are are pre-populated, which makes setup a whole lot easier. So it knows exactly where the receiver is. And then of course your header, I would, I would double check um, just to make, make sure that these are correct, but they have those pre-populated. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. And from this page, it also has a shortcut for your header settings. And you'll see as we go through this, there's a lot of ways to get to the same place. From here, we can, we can go into our, our header specific functions. The one place that maybe isn't as intuitive, if we click on this, icon right there. It takes us to our set to current height for our recording and our width. So just know that this is a button right here. A lot of guys uh, glance over that or they have the wrong header type selected. That is a button that you can that you can click on. So we'll hit on this here in, in just a little bit as well. But just know that, that that's one of the shortcuts to get to to get to your header. So after we go in, we make sure all of our combine is, is uh, set up correctly. The work summary is the same as the documentation in your 2630. We know that we're going to be harvesting, and this is where we can go and we can choose our crop type. So we're going to change it from a white wheat to hard red winter wheat. And just like in your 2630, we have to have a variety entered into our display. So we're going to come in here, and I'm just going to add a fictitious variety. Here as well, if you do have Variety Locator, if you're not familiar with it, it's where we create a, a specific file that has 
variety information from your planter. So if you do have that specific file, we can choose that here and click on this box and we could import that, that map and we could have these other uh, settings for letting us know that our variety changes. And that's what it's doing. It's, it's painting our different varieties as we harvest. So if, if you do use Variety Locator, it's set up in the same place that we would set up our single variety. So a lot of the, the basics of a Gen 4 and a, a 26 third year are the same. Uh, it's just a few different button pushes. So for this example, we're going to choose a single variety. Our units I mean, would, would never change that. But So as far as our, our documentation to get it to paint, we need to have these these filled out. As you know, the 2630, there was it's easy to miss some things and then it doesn't paint for you. Uh, the Gen 4s, they're a whole lot easier to, to get everything filled out as far as the required information. So from, from this page, I'm gonna go straight into this Harvest Setup button. Um, and this takes us to all of our combine specific settings, puts it all on one page so that way it's, it's uh, easy to make sure everything's filled out correctly. So I'm just going to go through each of these modules one at a time. So starting in the upper left, our harvest settings. With the Gen 4s, we can go and we can save specific combine settings. We can have one for corn, one for wheat, one for soybeans. So we go and we put all the settings to what we need them to be. And then we can go and hit save preset and it saves all of those different combine settings. So that way you switch between, between crops. You just have to go to your preloaded setup, and, and it has all that saved for you. It saves a lot of time as, as far as getting everything set up ready to go. But just know that that is an option. So if we go in, we, we create a new setup, we'll go in and we can tell it the threshing conditions, straw conditions, etc. And then hit that save preset. Then it's ready to go for next time. So current settings. So these are our combine specific conditions. Really important is our loss monitor and remember for our loss monitor our vision track we have to set the combine and we need to be happy with the results that we're getting. So we go out we we check behind us we're, we're happy with the loss we're happy with grain quality we're happy with what's going in the tank and then we need to go in we need to set our performance target. So when we look on the corner post at our at our loss monitor, that bar graph, it has to be set and has to be calibrated in order to show what's actually going on with our loss. So, but this is this is where we we set that set to current um, for our bar graph. So, just know this is in, this is pretty important. Up there at the top, this is again is where we can uh, save those presets. So we can go in here and we can change our our different combine specific functions. And then we can go up there to our preset and save that as a wheat harvest. Or you could do a, maybe your grain is a little wetter and you have different settings. You could save that as a, you know, as a wetter grain setting for your combines. Also, down here at the bottom, which is pretty handy, especially if you have a newer operator, has the outside configuration. So it tells you what the outside setting should be for that particular crop. So it's just a way to double check that we do have the right concaves and we have the right levers and everything uh, put to the right position. So just know that that's a, a good resource down there for that outside configuration. Those are our harvest settings and like I mentioned there's a lot of different ways to get to that same thing. But as we go across this harvest setup page there's a, again our box for our header and then we click up there at the top. This is a really common one uh, where guys will call wondering where this button is to set our, our recording po point for our, for our header. And again, here's all of our header specific functions. Um, our auto control, if we go down here, and of course being on a simulator, our header is not calibrated, so it's gonna show us that exclamation mark. But this is where we turn on all of our header automation functions. So if we have that functionality, we need to make sure those are all turned on. And again, our header needs to be calibrated, so. Okay, moving on, 
we're going to close out of our header and we actually have another video that's going to cover our integrated combine adjustments or our ICA2 which is our automation for our combine so once we go through this page and we tell it what settings we want our, our combine to be operating at we tell it the conditions, we save our presets, we make sure our header is set up that should get us ready to go to the field and we come back here and I'm going to hit OK for our setup so I'm going to go through these different home pages just to show you so our harvest settings again this is the same page that we saw before but again it's it's in a handy convenient place to get to go to our next page all of these counters they are customizable as well so if we want to come up here and change our counter we can ones that I like to see are instant moisture and that changes that particular box to show instant moisture just know if you click on these those are customizable these are our field totals for for whichever specific field we're, we're harvesting in our performance so again stay tuned for our um, other video on ICA2 um, but again, they do a pretty good job of putting together some home pages that are pretty functional. If we hit our main menu, um, as we're getting ready to go to the field, we're going to need to do a lot of the calibrations, especially if it's a new machine. We're going to be hooking up a header. It's recommended to do a, a header calibration every time we get ready to go for the season. Um, that's found under machine settings and calibrations and procedures so if we click on this I'm not going to go through all these but just know this is where we find them so our header these are all the different calibrations that, that are available um, if you click on each one of these it, it gives you specifics as to when the calibration needs to be done but again beginning of the season go through your header calibration even if it's the same header, it's, it's still a good idea to do before season. But those are your, your calibrations that you're going to need to go through. A lot of the other combine specific icons here in the machine settings, they're the same as what we've already been through. Again, it's just more ways to get to the same place. So your folding, all those functions, your header, your drain tank. This is one that you'll have to go to main menu in the machine settings for so that's where you can set your green tank level and then applications so if you can think of all of your AMS functions can be found under applications as well so that covers our gen 4 display setup for our combine if you have any questions feel free to let us know